is so far so good. Kumekuwa na motion mingi sana about the impeachment of our deputy Gashagwa and uh, tumesikiza kutoka kwa wazee, tumesikiza kutoka kwa wamama. Pande za central wengine wakasema hatutaki hiyo kitu hata ikienda iende tu. Wengine wakasema aende, wengine wakasema asiende. And maybe you've been asking yourself sometimes uh, back we saw youths on the street of Nairobi, we see Gen Z, the so called Gen Z in the street of Nairobi and maybe you've been asking what are they saying about this. So today we have one guy here from uh, uh, this country of ours representing the youth and so we would want to hear from him. Atuambie history ya Adani anaipata namna gani? Uh, history ya impeachment anaipokea namna gani? Wengine wamekuwa wamesema ni kufa dereva kuva makanga. Tusikie yeye kama youth anasema namna gani? So, is vipi bro? Niko poa. Karibu sana. Kwa majina anaitwa James Mulamba. Mhm. Dani Ruzu nizungumzie kwa kimombo kidogo. Sawa tu. Yeah. <coughs> Um, we've been treated to a theater of the absurd. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, the National Assembly of this country. Mm -hmm. I know Kasmuel has massaged their egos, mm -hmm. starting from whatever happened at Bomas, <laughs> uh, praising the MPs for mm -hmm. this and that, mm -hmm. and um, claiming that we do not really have such a huge mm -hmm. problem with the MPs, mm -hmm. and that they should um, try their best to give us services and give us some jobs as youths. Mm -hmm. That is pure gibberish. Mm -hmm. We are not satisfied with the current National Assembly. Mm -hmm. That is why we visited them on June 25th. Mm -hmm. And we will visit them again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is a public ground. It is our office. Mm -hmm. And we have every right to visit Parliament. Mm -hmm. Both the Senate and the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. We are coming. Mm -hmm. Because what the, the, the kind of nonsense we are being treated by the National Assembly is something we've not seen for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean... This assembly mm -hmm. is on record fast tracking the impeachment of the current deputy president regarding Gashagua mm -hmm. as if he is um, the biggest evil we have in this country, mm -hmm. as if he is the biggest priority we have in this country, as if he is the supplier of oxygen to Kenyans. While we have things they should have tackled that they did not tackle and they did not see as important. Let me refresh your mind to some of the things we should have tackled with this National Assembly. Mm -hmm. We have um, the issue of SHIF that was hastily deliberated in Parliament, mm -hmm. and most of the MPs do not understand what, what SHA and SHIF was about. They cannot differentiate between SHA, SHIF, uh, the um, primary health care, and the emergency and chronic illness fund. They cannot differentiate. And if you are a member of Parliament, cannot. How about you, as a common citizen, who waits upon your MP and your MCS to inform you on what is happening in government. Mm -hmm. Kathoni Wamushomba is on record, mm -hmm. on national television, on Citizen, if I'm to be precise, mm -hmm. saying that she does not understand Shah. Mm -hmm. If a member of parliament who passed <laughs> and voted for the Shah says mm -hmm. she does not understand Shah, and she's speaking for others, this is not a personal attack on Wamushomba. Mm -hmm. She is speaking on behalf of so many MPs who do not understand Sha and passed it. Mm -hmm. And they do not they did not understand the new funding model and they passed it. Mm -hmm. And there is one other burning issue our MPs should be taking uh, seriously that they should be tackling instead of tackling uh, this Gashagwa issue. One, there has been so many strikes in this country. Industrial action has been called for by the by Wasu by uh, lecturers, by nurses, by doctors, but that is not a matter of interest to the National Assembly. The JSS interns demonstrated on these streets for close to a month. Nothing was done. They were given a raw deal. Wasu and, uh, and, and the lecturers were given a, a raw deal, and they have threatened to go and strike again. Mm -hmm. Those are issues we should be addressing, because we have students who are at home now, because their lecturers do not want to teach. Mm -hmm. Their lecturers have boycotted. They are not teaching. So we have a semester that is untaught. And that, is, that has been normalized by this parliament. They think that is okay. Yes, I know we have the minister of, uh, we have the CS for Labour, Alfred Mutua, and he should sort that. But parliament has a share in that because it appropriates budgets. If they gave a good budget to the Ministry of Education. I am sure we would not be having these problems. But they would rather fund uh, they would rather fund other projects that are not important, but not fund health and education. The key the key ministries in this country. Mm -hmm. There is 
this issue of Gashagua that parliament is pretending to be so busy about. In fact, that parliament is full of busybodies. They have nothing important to show Kenyans because they are wasting too much time discussing the impeachment of Gashagua. And today I had James Orengo, a man I respect so much, acting as a lawyer for the National Assembly, arguing in Senate that Gashagua went against his oath of office, mm -hmm. arguing that as part of the grounds to remove Gashagua from office. Mm -hmm. Then I asked myself, James Orengo swore an oath of office. All the, the thieves that we have in parliament, because they are thieves and Kenya is a hypocrisy. And hypocrisy is a word, by the way. All the 290 MPs we have in Kenya, almost all of them are thieves. They swore an oath of office, didn't they? Mm -hmm. We have 47 governors in this country. They swore an oath of office, did they not? Mm -hmm. We have their deputy governors. Mm -hmm. We have the office of the uh, Directorate of Public Prosecutions, the DCI. Mm -hmm. They all swore oaths of office in this country, but they have not followed anything they said in that oath of office. The president swore an oath of office. That oath of office he has not upheld. How has he upheld that oath of office? By killing youths that went to picket and demonstrate because of bad governance. How is that upholding the oath of office? How is the president upholding an oath of office mm -hmm. by superintending over the abduction and kidnapping of innocent Kenyans mm -hmm. just because they were involved in protests that were anti-bad governance? Mm -hmm. How is the president respecting that oath of office? Mm -hmm. How are the MPs respecting their oath of office when they are stealing CDF? Because we know they are stealing CDF. Mm -hmm. An MP gets into parliament with, 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 with no investment in this country. Five years later, ten years later, they are the richest business people in this country. What kind of investment do our politicians do that we cannot do? That they cannot invest our resources mm -hmm. as Kenyans to double on the money that we get. I mean, they should show us, this is why I invest my money. As Kenyans, mm -hmm. let us invest our government money in this so that we can reap more money. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense that poor politicians get into government offices and within a few years they are as rich as Bill Gates. It does not make sense. William Ruto was worth 100 million in 2015. Today is probably worth more than 50 billion. Where has he gotten that money from? Which investment has he made that we as Kenyans are not uh, aware of? I mean, he should come out, come, come out clean in public so that we can, we can, we can, um, we can copy him. I would want to emulate the president mm -hmm. if his investments are so shrewd uh -huh. and he is such a good investor <laughs> that he reaps billions and billions of money in such a short time. Mm -hmm. Kidure Kindiki is one of of office. Mm -hmm. Kidure Kindiki amassed millions of money in two years. It is on record. And almost all the CSs, they, did they respect their oath of office back then when they were amassing wealth through offices that we fund? It is our taxes that pay these people. It is our money they steal. And that is why I'm so angry now. Because it is our money that is being misappropriated misappropriated and stolen. And they are making it look like Gashagwa is the face of corruption, the face of tribalism, the face of evil, and is everything wrong with this government. Before Gashagwa started speaking about the shareholding uh, stories, mm -hmm. it was not his idea. It was not, it was not, um, I mean, Gashagwa did not, did not come up with the shareholding, um, the shareholding conversation we have today. Mm -hmm. The shareholding conversation has been in this country before and quite elaborately put down in the Kenya Kwanza shareholding agreement because they have such a document. It was circulated in public. Everybody mm -hmm. saw it. Mm -hmm. Amazon King signed it. Mm -hmm. Gashagwa himself signed it. Mm -hmm. William Ruto signed it. Wetangula signed it. What were they signing? They were signing an agreement to share government appointive positions, mm -hmm. an agreement to share resources and revenue, depending on how many votes you brought to this government. Mm -hmm. And it is open knowledge to the public. Mm -hmm. And if that existed, the, the Speaker of the National Assembly is as guilty as Gashagwa is. Mm -hmm. And Gashagwa has no, has, has, has no moral qualms with, with his stance on his harshness against Wetangula because he knows he's right. He, he has no doubt is in, in his mind that he is truthful. Mm -hmm. He has no doubt in his mind that Amazon King is another shareholder. Mm -hmm. 
they, they just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Wetangula doesn't talk about his shareholding part. Mm -hmm. Amazon Kingi doesn't talk about his shareholding part, but there are shareholders in this government, mm -hmm. and they have gotten their they have gotten their benefit as having brought some number of votes to this country. Mm -hmm. So they should stop crucifying Gashagua just because he is a guy who is uh, so vocal on the shareholding stories doesn't mean that was his idea. It was an idea of so many people, the president included, the speaker of the National Assembly, the speaker of Senate. Uh, I mean, it is not a Gashagwa issue. On the issue of tribalism, I know they have fronted this as a card against Gashagwa. And I'm not here to sanitize Gashagwa. Mm -hmm. I am just stating the fact as it is. Mm -hmm. Gashagwa is not the only p politician who is tribal in this country. Mm -hmm. You listen to the likes of Silvana Sosoro, the likes of Oscar Sudi, mm -hmm. the likes of Rashi De Chesa, the likes of Clopas Malala, when they go to their backgrounds, they, where they come from, when they go to their constituencies, listen to what they say when they go home. Pay attention to what they say. You will understand that Gashago is not the problem. All of them are the problem. How is it that now, because Gashago has pushed for a share of Mount Kenya and because he pushes the Mount Kenya agenda, he's tribal. But when they were, they, they, they were, they were galvanizing support for the presidency in 2022 alongside ethnic lines they were not tribal even today when they address their people at home they address them along uh, along ethnic conversations and that is not construed as tribalism when they do that but when gashagwa speaks about the mount kenya people and uh, trying to secure their interests is very tribal that is absurd that is in fact a play and a game that this government is playing with us. And this Gashagwa issue is being tackled because Gashagwa probably differed with most of them on tenders, on government investments, on developments that, that um, he thought were supposed to be appropriated to certain areas, probably to Mount Kenya because he was pushing for their share. I've already told you it's a shareholding government mm -hmm. and they cannot sanitize themselves from this. Mm -hmm. And probably Gashagwa differed with the president and most of the CSS and the guys who are close to the president, the likes of Farouk Kibet, the likes of Oscar Sudi, because of probably he felt they were blocking the door and his access to the president. And he also felt they were over pushing their agendas over him, who is the current deputy president. It is on record before that Nicholas Biwot, the then um, close ally of President Moy was so close to Moy that you had to go through the war to get to the president. It is possible we have the same situation in this country that we have folks Gashago has to go through to get to the president. It is also possible there are MPs and CSS and state officers who feel they have a, a bigger command over the president than the deputy president. That whatever he says comes second to whatever they say. That his interest as deputy president, even the interest to his his office and liaison to 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 to, to the president because. The deputy president is a principal assistant and he needs to advise the president on several issues. Mm -hmm. It is possible that most of these people have been frustrating the deputy president because they feel probably he's too aggressive or he's a man who stands his, who stands his ground. Because Gashagwa has shown Kenyans that he's a man who stands his ground. He said he will not resign. Most Kenyans thought he was joking. Mm -hmm. If that assertive man goes against those that are close to the president, they have every interest to take him out. It is possible these are personal issues they are sorting with Gashagwa. And it does not concern Kenyans because they are luring us and, uh, and they, they are dissuading us from the issues that matter as a country, from the issues which we should be prosecuting as a country, from the issues we should be concent concentrating as a country. And we are warning them. All those MPs and all those CSs, now that in the, com in the comfort of government and the warmth of government think they are safe. They are not because we are coming for them. We are going to recall those MPs and we are going to push for a dissolution of that cabinet and we are even going to push for the impeachment of the president we have today because it is constitutional to impeach the president. We are going to push him to resign because he is not serving our interests. He is a shareholder in this government. He is a tribal guy. He is a corrupt guy. It has been proven beyond beyond doubt. Even Joe told us how corrupt the DP is uh, when Ruto was the DP to the to Uru, and he is not willing to work with Ruto anywhere. 
I don't know what changed now Joe is in government and sit, sitting in cabinet with the same thief he was against. You understand yeah. the hypocrisy we have in these politicians. Yeah. They know where the problem is. They do not want to deal with the problem. They know what is a priority. They would never want to deal with that, with what is a priority. They want to they want us they want to pull us to their politics and to their games. Today as we speak counties have not received their fair share. Counties have not received the their location they are supposed to get. Because the Senate and the National Assembly cannot agree that the Senate proposes an increment of 20 billion shillings to the counties, mm -hmm. bringing it to 400 billion shillings. National Assembly is not, is not comfortable with dispersing 400 billion shillings to counties, but they are willing to disperse 1 billion shillings to projects they, that are not beneficial to this country. They are willing to give probably uh, 70 billion shillings to SHIF, which is not a priority because we had NHIF. And if they wanted to upgrade NHIF and revamp it to uh, suit probably the new insurance covers and the new additives that the government brought, they would have done that. They have money to give to SHIF. They have money to give to uh, ministries that do not help us at all, but they do not have 20 billion shillings to give to counties. And this back and forth between the National Assembly and the Senate has, has forestalled counties. Today, as we speak, so many employees in counties have gone for months without pay. How are they surviving? How are they paying rent? How are they paying school fees? How are they, uh, how, how are they, um, how are they paying their bills? And how is the governor, uh, how are the governors able to pay this county staff without funding from the national government? Just because there is a tussle a supremacy war between the National Assembly and the Senate. And it happens almost every year. This is not the first time that counties have found themselves in a cash crunch. It is not the first time because the National Assembly and the Senate cannot agree on anything. They are, they are almost always competing on which house is the upper house, mm -hmm. who has more authority, who has more ego than the other on things that are not important. But on matters impeachment, they are willing to agree. In fact, look at how... how expeditiously the National Assembly has dealt with the impeachment of Kashagwa in record time. Within two weeks, they have been able to summarize, conclude, investigate, prosecute Kashagwa even faster than ESCC, DPP and the DCI. In fact, Parliament should be our new DPP and our new DCI. <laughs> they are so fast with these issues. And the Senate has quickly clicked the bait and taken over the impeachment process. Today, they were discussing that impeachment in Senate. Mm -hmm. But they cannot agree on matters of importance like disbursement of funds to county governments. They cannot agree on a matter as important as that because they are the ones killing devolution. They said Gashagwa is undermining devolution because Gashagwa went to a market in Muthurwa mm -hmm. and said that these market traders were not consulted thoroughly mm -hmm. before the county government of Nairobi decided to relocate them from Muthurwa to Kangundo market. Mm -hmm. He was protecting the interest of those traders. Mm -hmm. Whether they are Kikuyu or Kisi mm -hmm. or uh, Luo or Kamba, they are in the same market. Mm -hmm. If he goes there and probably uh, most of the people from Mount Kenya identify with him and decide to show him love and support as a man from their area. I am not pushing tribalism here, but I'm saying if people from Mount Kenya decide to show love to Gashago at Muthurwa market, mm -hmm. I mean, what is wrong with that? If Raila goes to a market in, say, Kisumu, mm -hmm. or a market that is dominated by Luos, mm -hmm. I know Muthurwa has so many traders, but we know most of them are from Mount Kenya. That is a fact. Yes. Even though you would want to bash me for this, that is a fact. If Raila Odinga goes to a market that is dominated by our good people from the Nyanza region, mm -hmm. and they decide to show him love, mm -hmm. and he decides to, to address them in the Luo, mm -hmm. what, what, is, what is the problem there? Yes, it was not okay for Gashagwa to appear to pull the tribal card with the Mudurwa market relocation. But he was trying to protect their interests. Mm -hmm. How is he undermining devolution when he says the traders should have been consulted thoroughly before the county government of Nairobi decided to relocate them to Kangundo market? Because the traders themselves are not satisfied. They are not satisfied. They are saying whatever was discussed was not concluded. It was not conclusive. And they did not agree to be relocated to Kangundo Market. Probably they feel Kangundo Market is so far away. Kangundo Market is in, um, is in Umoja, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Kangundo Market is alongside Kangundo Road. Mm. It is not a stone throw away from the CBD. It is far away from the CBD. If 
the traders in Muthurwa market feel they will lose so much business relocating to a market that is so far away from town. What is wrong with the deputy president siding with them and saying these traders deserve equity, these traders deserve some fairness, and it is unfair to remove traders from this market to a market that is so far away. We have so many government we have so many government lands around uh, around nairobi mm -hmm. they would have been relocated to another area that is not so far away mm -hmm. i do not want to dig deep on that issue but gashagwa addressed that issue and I'm, i have said i am not here to sanitize gashagwa i am here to say the facts as they are mm -hmm. so gashagwa did not undermine devolution in fact your mps the same mps kasmuel praised are the ones that are undermining devolution it is on record that year after year after year after year, the National Assembly and the Senate must always push each other back and forth, back and forth, till it's close to six months spent before they release money to county governments. Why do we have to be treated to this debacle almost all the time? Why this fracas? Why can they agree on issues that are of interest to Kenyans? if they cannot agree on things that are of interest to us as Kenyans. I think it is about time we decide to recall all these MPs or find another way of removing all of them from office. These two houses are not serving us. These two houses are not serving our interests. They are serving their own interests and they are probably being pocketed by the executive to push the agenda of the executive. That is why they expedite matters of the executive. That is why they are so, so fastidious on matters that are pushed to us by the executive. But on issues that are of importance to us as Kenyans, they don't care, they are never in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, let me maybe ask uh, about uh, the Adani issues. So you see, mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. on the Daily Nation, mm -hmm. on the first page, mm -hmm. This is not related to Adani, but mm -hmm. would want to bring this to attention before we tackle Adani. Mm -hmm. The DPP, Renson Ingonga, mm -hmm. I, 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 I am not sure that is his name, but I hope that is his name. Mm -hmm. He's on record. He's trying to withdraw a 7.6 billion graft case against Devan. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time the DPP is withdrawing cases against uh, guys who've been charged and companies that have been charged before. It is not the first time. Mm -hmm. It, it looks like a politically instigated move mm -hmm. by the executive or by the powers that be to sanitize some fellows. Mm -hmm. You saw the other day the case by John Waluke was was acquitted. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the case was concluded um, mm -hmm. at the Court of Appeal and he was acquitted. Mm -hmm. Despite incriminating evidence mm -hmm. without measure, mm -hmm. he was convicted by the High Court because there was substantial evidence to uh, jail him. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was fined. I, I think a billion shillings and also he was he was also sentenced to 67 years in prison mm -hmm. but he was acquitted by the court of appeal on what grounds on what grounds i mean when you look at the shenanigans that happen in this country you feel like you want to kill yourself mm -hmm. so the dpp has been withdrawing cases left right and center mm -hmm probably at the behest of the executive because it does not make sense that these guys have been convicted. There is enough evidence to put them behind bars, but you want to withdraw their cases. As who? The DPP serves us. He's a public officer. Why does it seem he's serving some powers? On the issue of the PPPs, this is not the first time as Kenyans we are being treated to PPPs. On the Daily Nation page 15, there is a good, there is a good uh, columnist who has tackled that in that whole issue. I don't remember his name. Mm -hmm. But I stand in awe. He has coherently and articulately gone and taken his time to write to us all the PPPs we've had as a country and the PPPs that are to come. Warning Kenyans to be vigilant on the, on the whole issue of PPPs. Mm -hmm. Because according to that columnist, there were PPPs for the Nairobi Mau Summit mm -hmm. during Uru's time mm -hmm. that did not take off. Mm -hmm. There was um, another PPP on the Nairobi Mombasa Road mm -hmm. that was supposed to be done by Brechel. Mm -hmm. There was another PPP. Those two PPPs were mm -hmm. frustrated because of political gatekeepers in the Uru regime who mm -hmm. felt their interests were not being served. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who look at PPPs as a way to make money. Mm -hmm. There is a clause in the Kenyan constitution that allows fellows to manipulate PPPs to their favor. Mm -hmm. So that they are supposed, because that clause says the Kenyan people should have a certain shareholding in any private company that is trying to invest in this country. Whether it is a domestic company or a foreign company, the Kenyan people should have a share 
in that. And probably the government should have a share in that PPP. And that is what has been manipulated by politicians over and over and over to get money to their pockets through PPPs. And the two PPPs for, Nai for Nairobi Mausamit Road and the Nairobi Mombasa Road did not take off because the gatekeepers in Uru's government did not agree. Let me show you, during Uru's government, mm -hmm. there was a plan to lease for 30 years mm -hmm. the Mombasa port, mm -hmm. Terminal 1, mm -hmm. for 30 years. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing Uru is uh, the same thing Ruto is proposing mm -hmm. through the Adani deal. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I confuse Uru and Ruto because they are one and the same thing. Uh -huh. Uru was as was as bad as Ruto is. I will not sanitize him here. He was supposed um I mean he was he had a plan mm -hmm. in his government mm -hmm. to lease the Mombasa port terminal one for 30 years. Go read for yourselves. Daily Nation page 15. Mm -hmm. And if that deal went through mm -hmm. This will not be the first time we would be discussing infrastructures that are crucial and critical to this country, given over to PPPs. This will not be the first time. It is unfortunate or fortunate that it is Ruto we are crucifying on the Adani PPP deal, but he is not the first guy to propose that. He is actually copying his boss. He is actually copying his boss. And that columnist was thorough and to the point that this Adani deal probably as given the kickbacks to this government mm -hmm. as they wanted. Mm -hmm. It is possible, they have also gotten the shareholding clause I, I alluded to before, as they wanted. Mm -hmm. Because if they did not, they would not be, be pushing for, for the Adani company mm -hmm. to get a share in almost every part of government mm -hmm. by hook and crook. Mm -hmm. If they did not get their kickbacks, mm -hmm. if they did not get their shareholding agreement in the PPP, they would not be pushing for this. Mm -hmm. And that columnist is on point saying that this is not the first time, it is not the last time that PPPs will be proposed in this country as an alternative to uh, public financing of projects. Mm -hmm. I understand PPPs uh, come in when government cannot fund almost all projects because government does not have all the money to fund all the projects. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is true. Mm -hmm. Government cannot have all the money. With the debts that we have, because we have so many debts, mm -hmm. we need PPPs. But can we have PPPs that are beyond, that, that are beyond, um, beyond uh, let me say, that are beyond blame? Can we have PPPs that are reputable? Mm -hmm. Can we have PPPs that cannot be, cannot be blamed for anything? Mm -hmm. Can we have PPPs that are holding the best interest of Kenyans at heart mm -hmm. because we have them. Mm -hmm. The China Road and Bridge did the expressway. Mm -hmm. It was a good PPP mm -hmm. and the expressway is running nicely. Mm -hmm. We have we have private companies mm -hmm. and we have individuals in this country who can mm -hmm. do that airport mm -hmm. and almost every other in, uh, infrastructure project that needs to be done in this country mm -hmm. with their own money. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Wanjiki proposed to do the airport. Mm -hmm. He has the, the 238 billion mm -hmm. or he knows how to raise the 238 billion. Mm -hmm. The government is not willing to give uh, Jimmy Wanjiki the airport mm -hmm. because probably Jimmy Wanjiki has not to talk to them nicely. Mm -hmm. We have the African Development Bank that funds projects. The NDB has money to fund us the 238 billion shillings that the airport needs. They do not want the proposal by the ADB bank. There is, um, we can also raise that money domestically mm -hmm. because it doesn't make sense that we cannot raise 238 billion shillings to upgrade our airport. We can raise that money in phases. Mm -hmm. It is not a must to upgrade the entire airport in record time mm -hmm. because Adani is actually going to upgrade this airport for close to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So what is stopping the government from doing the airport in phases? Mm -hmm. When I phase one, 2023 20, to 2024, because Ruto will go for another term. Mm -hmm. Ruto will get another term. Mm -hmm. they, they can do the phase two in 2025 to 2026. Mm -hmm. They can do the phase three, 2027 to 2028. Mm -hmm. why, why are we being pushed to give everything to Adani while the government can fund this in phases? Mm -hmm. Ama Ruto and Ona Ata Rudi 2027. It is a leg legacy project. He wants, to, he wants to give Kenyans, mm -hmm. that I understand. Mm -hmm. The same legacy Uru gave to Kenyans with um, the SGR project SGR. and the expressway. Mm -hmm. Ruto is looking for a legacy project. That we understand. Mm -hmm. But there are countries that do not have, that are not as shady as Adani, not as corrupt as Adani, that we could get to fund the airport deal. Mm -hmm. We have Tata Sands and uh, the Tata Sands Limited. Mm -hmm. We have um, ZGTR and we have the African Development Bank. 
and we have companies in, the, in this country that can pull resources to fund that Adani, even in phases. The Safaricom consortium consisting of Safaricom, Adi Lawanja, and um, this other company. I don't remember the other company. The wife to David D. Mwende Gatabaki, the company she owns, is able to pull 104 billion for the SHIF. We have, that, that tells us we have people and companies in this country that can pull together to get the 238 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. If they can get 104 billion shillings for SHIF, mm -hmm. we can get 238 billion shillings for the airport. We do not have to list this airport to Adani mm -hmm. for that year. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense and it is it is a conduit to steal our to steal our resources mm -hmm. because we will be paying for flights and we'll be paying for services at JKIA. Mm -hmm. Where will that money be going for for that year? We have already complained enough how Kenya always, has always been making losses year after year after year after year after year. Mm -hmm. What will change when, when Adani gets this airport? Mm -hmm. In fact, now that they have gotten Ketraco, electricity prices will soar up. It, it is in, on record that Gujarat prices of electricity have gone up. Mm -hmm. Why are we giving them our, our, our supply lines of electricity? Mm -hmm. Probably we will soon give them Kenjen and soon give them KPLC. There's no difference between Ketrako, Kenjen, and KPLC. Uh -huh. They all collaborate together uh -huh. to give us electricity. Uh -huh. If we've given them Ketrako, uh -huh. I mean, we'll give them KPLC because they will say, we need to be the ones charging electricity uh -huh. because KPLC only comes in to charge you for electricity. Uh -huh. They will say we need to charge you for electricity so that we can recoup the money that we invested in Ketraco. Mm -hmm. And they will also say we need to invest in Kenjen mm -hmm. so that we are the ones buying the, the machines to create uh, uh, electricity, whether hydroelectric or geothermal, so that we can create enough energy, enough electric energy to supply the whole country. So they will take Kenjen, they will take Ketraco, and they will take KPLC. Where will we go as a country? Because our electricity is everything. Everything here is running on electricity. These microphones, mm. these phones, mm -hmm. these cameras, mm. these buildings, these vehicles, almost everything in Kenya runs on electricity. So you give all that to a private investor. For what? For what? Wow. And possibly, uh -huh. before we are done with Ruto, he's going to give out our port, Mombasa port, to another Adani, because <laughs> Adanis are not um, are not limited. We mm. have so many Adanis out there mm. that need to do business with government. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for that uh, uh, insight, and uh, I love it. As a youth, I support it 100% just because uh, as I had told you earlier that we've heard from men, we've heard from uh, women, but we've not heard from uh, the youth. Maybe if next time we find time, kindly put down on the comment section, uh, we put it down there. Uh, next time I'll also look for him and maybe we look for more and more. So if you have any question, kindly put it on the comment section just because we'll be doing this. From my side, I'm Jefferson from Morori TV and uh, we are here to keep you posted and updated on whatever is happening uh, concerning the Gachagua's impeachment. So kindly, if it's your first time here, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. If it's your first time here, also hit that notification bell just because we are here to stay and to keep you posted and updated. When you say that, wananchi ambayo wanaamini bungo wanangojea nini? Wakati yu mamu asingishu, akisama ataonesha Gachagua, anamefea notice. He is talking the same thing. He is talking the same. Sasa, Kenyans, In fact, with those facts, if lawyers, Kenya law of society, wakiena kotini, those people will be removed from those positions. Niyona kumpuli juzi akisema, ato wakiwa impeached. Kasangu wakiwa impeached. Ataka mujadara the following day ya ku impeach president. Muliona vile alitu wa bungo wakati ya isama MPs wa waliwongwa na milioni mbili. Alikuwa nalia kama mtoto kwa bunge. Kulia kama mtoto. Uyo ni mtu wa kutanganya zia atapeleka motion. Apeleka wapi. Analala kama jogo ikikata, kama mwela ikitaa kulikuwa na jogo. Alikuwa nalia bunge kulia. Mimi sina rafiki. Rafiki yangu ni yamani. Sasa kusema... Kachagua ni mukabila. Ati anayenda mbilima peke yake. They don't feel how Kachagua is feeling. Let me give you an example, a very serious example. Umbo yako ikienda inje huku ipigwe. Inakujaga ikilia ikiludi nyumbani. It's the same with human being. Eh? 
kama wanapiga kachagua the first place to go crying it is home so sasa kutoka hapo ndio aende pahali nyingine i know the demand is very high hata wakalini wameniambia tell him to come na wazikuja hata na mps akuje tuombe na yeye they are demanding him ile mtu analibio mambo yote ni faruku na faruku i'm telling you if any bloodshed if any bloodshed ya incitement yako if anybody would die for incitement kwa mipango yako wewe we are asking ICC come now international ICC kuja now mwanze kuangalia the leaders of incitement nikitibu hii mambo hii mambo iishe na mimi naona ubinafsi ndio umekuwa mwingi sana lakini mjue impeachment is not something easy nimeona saa hizi 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 nikiwa hapa kwa simu yangu koti imekata the court have said no they cannot give orders of impeachment of Gachagua you see the three arms of the government three arms of the government presidency executive i mean parliament na judiciary three things bunge is is how inatengeneza sheria so when they are going against the law wajue they are doing something completely bad to the kenyans wameenda ubinafsi ni chakula tu watafuta ya kukula na mimi nashindwa hii njaa imekuaje wanazunguza mambo wengine ate huyu ana hii huyu ana hoteli sijui ana hii mimi ningewaambia hivi nugu haioni kundule lake inaona kundule la mwenzake kwa sababu hako juu yake nyinyi yote muko na record ya wizi and what you are doing is wrong completely wrong inchi ya Kenya kwanza muta impeach na hata sasa isimame ama isisimame nyinyi i want to tell you you all be impeached by wanjiko kwa sababu wanjiko hako atuma bunge mkatafuta mtu akupeleka nyinyi kwa rais kwa ni rais amekataa kuona nyinyi so just want to be taken there with the incitement ili mupate pesa kindiki kidhule mimi nakuuliza saa hii umeitwa bunge umekubali rais anasema hakuna mtu amekufa wao wamesema watu wamekufa na umesema hajapatikana. Now this confusion. President akasema yeye mwenyewe hata kubali deputy wake asumbuliwe bila alisumbuliwa. Now if you are allowing these boys to impeach Gachagua. Mambo yaliyo toka mdomo yako utafanyishwa kesi naye. Na hiyo is very hard kuondokea. Because you are the president we respect you. Ukisema leo uite PG unaita kama ni kesho. Useme stop this kashagwa iko hapa na unasemaga hiyo kwa kanisa. Lakini nimeona hakuna effect kwa kanisa inaingia. Now call to the Kenyans wanjiko voters. Uwaite hapo mbele yako kashagwa PG ministers. Na watu wa chama yako ya UDA wa Kenya kwanza. Waambie I don't want this. Already there is embarrassment kubwa sana. Ningeambia president wetu. Kwa sababu kama huyu mama wa nini wasingishu shole yeye ni speaker na anatakiwa kuwa neutral kama anatokea na kusema you teach gashagua alison alison si tuna hope ya hiyo bunge wetangu la jana anatoka anasema mimi ikachagua nitakuwa laini ya mbele kuimpeach wewe huyo ni speaker wa Tangula kwa sababu walipita kwa uongozi kwa mlango ya nyuma I know who Luto gave them that percent but they brought 6% ile watu wanaingia kwa mlango ya nyuma they are the problem na i'm telling you your excellency hata ile watu umeweka ndani kusaidia kwa serikali let me tell you how ndio watakukula kwenda kwa historia ni nani amesumbua sana serikali zote ambazo zimekuweko you be able to know Why don't go east don't lie east or don't kikukuracho kingoni mwako all these things your excellency just go as you did the last time mpizi wakapiga nimesema hapa wakapiga yes lakini uko haita wewe ukapiga no kwa sababu wakati usimamisha hiyo bill ili kusema walienda nini walienda no that means siku hiyo ulipiga no watu walikuwa hapa nyuma wakishangilia vile wewe utapiga no utapiga yes 
lakini with your wisdom na kuangalia JNC vile walisema wewe ulikubali na ukapiga no kwa sababu wakati uli reject ulienda no na wote walipoenda no wakaacha wakipiga makofi kitu moja tu haukufanya kama ungeangalia uambie na nyinyi ni ngombe na ni mbusi wangepiga makofi tu kwa sababu actually that's how they are they are not interested with the country they are only interested with their stomach na nimesema hapo mbele si walikwenda hapa nyahuru kugawana pesa hapo wakiongozwa na kionjuli kugawana pesa hapo baada ya kugawanya hiyo pesa huko walitoka hapo hata kuenda kuambia watoto wa Kenya ambao walikufa kwa shule they did not go na wao wanasema ati viongozi ya kesho who should be impeached if this guy who stood with these people ama ni nyimu leo kugawana nyahuru pesa na pia nasikia mrudishwa hizo pesa zingine na kionjuli mazishi kafika ya kuzika watoto wenyu nyinyi ni watu wa milima how watoto all of them the wakikuyus from 9 years to 13 years and 14 years you are children nyinyi hamukuenda hata kwa mazishi shimo ni you you should be impeached before gashagua for the things which you are doing i'm annoyed i have not slept nimeongea na redio kutoka saa moja inaitwa enyona ingine jana the same i was in the church i was everywhere i was in the tv and i've been talking about this piece left vale tuliumia sana mnataka turudi hapo tena and i want to assure you and tell you the challenging of left vale kikuyus muzikie they are peaceful and they don't want impeachment they don't want wanasema is too early na wanasema muende mpaka 2027 kama kutakuwa na mambo mengine ikue huko lakini for now mwache mambo impeachment there is a law in this country na ile sheria iko hapa nchi hii wacha watu waende mpaka kisheria 2027 na tukifika 2027 hakuna mtu atauliza umwacha huyu kwa nini na umeenda na huyu kwa nini watu wataweza kujipanga that is the constitution why are we not using the constitution hawa vijana wengine ni kukula tu kina itumbe hawana njia nyingine na kuna mwingine atakuja kutambua yeye ni waambie mtu mzee mtu mzima kabisa his work in incitement throughout na ni mtu wako na mali ni mtu amejipanga and hana heshima akiongea kizungu natoka na mapua and he is only kazi yake ni incitement nitakuja kuambia jina yake he had been inciting people ili anapata pesa alikuwa kwa kwa kwa, kwa, kwa nani alikuwa kwa former president kibake wakakosana akavutwa akakuja kwa uhuru akapata kwa state house akafukuzwa amekuja kwa ruto akaingia state house akafanya fanya amevutwa kazi mtu mzima huko na mwili kazi yako ni incitement hakuna kitu kingine unafanya where are we going in this country if you are elected it to serve the people to the promise me gender mingi sana your excellence i want to tell you it will not be possible that you kuja na pesa ngapi when the country is not stable, you will not be able actually to implement anything. Itakusumbua mbaka daika ya mwisho. Kwa hivyo, tuwache hiyo kwanza, tuudumie. Siku ya moyo tuitengesa barabara. Mashule. Tukienda siyasa ya moyo tunahambio, tunasema hii barabara tumetengenesa. Walikuwa natuambia, kunja kama, kama nini, kama blangeti muende nae. Tunasema tujenga shule hii tunahambio, tafuta roli mubebe hiyo shule enyu. What do I want to say? That the peace is the drive of everything. Ya economy ya kila kitu yote. Ama tunakuwa diverted. Na hawa watoto vijana hawa. Ile pesa hamekula ata raisi uwe bila kujua. Pengini yu pesa ni wataa kudivert. Lakini I'm telling you. Kenyans. Wanjiko. Mutakutana. JNC. Wamesimama imara. Hata kula hakuna kula moja itaibiwa. JNC wametangasa musimamu. They will stand for the vote. I'm asking the president, is it important to mwage damu kwa kupigania ikiti? Kwa sababu, wewe ujatuambia, kachagu ujatuambia, exactly, nini mulikosania. If we know walikosania nini, it will be easy for all of us to understand and to make a solution. Last thing nasema, wewe president wetu luto, wewe ni wa AIC. Una bishop wewe ni wa AIC. Wewe kachagu ni wa PCA. Where are these church? Where are your bishops? Munashindo kusimama kama ECK. 
Vile sabiti mwenye ya meongoza kanisa yake ya kisema hata kuongea hakuna. Why are you allowing people to come and attack others in the church? It's because of the corruption, because of money. Let the president talk. Hakitaka kujikaranga na maneno yake ya jikarange. Let the president talk. Lakini hawa tingine huko chini. Wanafuata hawa kwa sababu ya kula zao. Wakitafuta vila cha chagudua. Nijona kumpuli juzi ya kisema. Hata wakiwa impeached. Kasa wakiwa impeached. Hata paleka mujada the following day. Ya ku impeach president. Muliona vila jitu wa bunga wakati ya kisema MPs waliwangwa na milioni mbili. Ajikuwa nalia kama mtoto. Kwa bunge. Kulia kama mtoto. Uyo ni mtu wa kutanganya zia hata paleka motion. Apeleka wapi. Analala kama jogo ikikata, kama mwela ikitaka kudukua na jogo. Alikuwa nalia bunga kulia. Mimi sina rafiki. Rafiki yangu ni yamani. Sisi watu wa lift wale. Wanao, wana, wale wanakahawa na wale wana majani chai na wale hawana. Our coffee and tea, it is peace. The peace of lift wale. Na mufunga kabisa ndugu zetu. Wakali na wakiu don't agree to be divided. Na luto usisahau hizi kabla ya zingine ndogo ndogo wa viongozi hao wanawivu kikuyu walipiga kura kwa njia gani 47% na wewe mwenyewe I remember very well and I don't know where that clip was I'll check wewe mwenyewe ukisema kama ni shares wa kikuyu watu wa milima wangeenda na more shares wewe mwenyewe present you said with your mouth sasa kusema kura yetu tunasungumzaka tuna kwa hii business anatuambia Kaunte fulani imeleta kura hii. Kaunte fulani imeleta kura hii. Kaunte fulani imechagua MP kadhaa. Kaunte fulani imefanya hii. Why are we putting ourselves at mambo ya ukabila? I was born in Rift Valley. My mother was born in Rift Valley. Na alitoka Katundu. My father came from Nyeri. I don't have any roots in those areas. Roots zangu ni Banita, pale nilizaliwa. Sasa mimi nauliza Mukiaza kusema huko atemwejiga wa Meru sijui kile nyaga na embu. Sasa mnaanza kusema atemuranga eh na nyeri na Kiambu atena hao akanyukane. I want to promise you and tell you Kenya sisi na tumi. Sisi ambaye tuko Rift Valley. Tuko na Meru. Tuko na Embu. Tuko na kile nyaga. Tuko na Muranga. Tuko na all other tribes. Unataka kuleta hiyo vita yenu mtaremsha hapa chini. Tuanze kuulizana wewe mtu wa media. Wewe umetoka wapi? Wewe umetoka Meru? Tuanze chuki. Wewe umetoka Kiambu? Tuanze chuki. Is it how you people up? Unataka kutalemkia si atimkegawana jijino. Ati mnasema ati mnataka mtu akupeleka nyiko present. You are stupid people. Judiciary executive na parliament. Three. You work together. Why do you look some other broker atakuwa akupeleka nyiko present? You can go. You are working together. Or you want to confirm the president don't see you. Which is a lie. The president unawana watu wa nyili wa kienda. Unawana watu wa mulanga wa kienda. Hii gini munataka munataka broka kutafutia nyi pesa ama nikufanya nini. And if the president check and balance natoka kwa bunge. Ayakataa kuzikia nyini you can call him in the parliament. And even you can impeach the president. Hii mambo ya kusema natataka mutu wa kutupeleka. Iyo ni ujinga mtupu. Wanjiku hako wapa madet hiyo. Ali wapa mafanyie mambo ile tulipromise. And they tell me. Let me tell you. Musibamisha hii, mkwaza kusimamisha, but 2027, let me tell you, there is a notice of going home for many MPs. God bless Kenya. Aswali moja tu mshumiwa, tunona kwamba wajumbe wa Mount Kenya, nikana kwamba mekusanyika ili kumpeche Deputy President, wanasema kwamba yeye ni tribe wa Mr. Stana. Nebio nge tu kupatia musimamu wako kusena na hayo. Sasa kusema, kachagwa ni mukabila. Ati anayenda mbilima peke yake. They don't feel how he kashagwa is feeling. Let me give an example, a very serious example. Umbo yako ikienda inje huku ipigwe. Inakujaka ikilia ikiludi nyumbani. It's the same with human being. Kama wanapiga kashagwa, the first place to go, crying, it is home. So sasa kutoka hapo ndi waende pahali ingine. I know the demand is very high. Hata wakari nyo waminiambia, tell him to come na wazikuja hata na MPs. Akuja tuombe na ee. They are demanding him. Ile mtu wanaribi yo mambo yote ni faruku. Na faruku, I'm telling you, if any bloodshed, if any bloodshed, ya incitement yako, if anybody will die for incitement, kwa mipango yako, wewe, we are asking ISIS come now, 
international IC. Kuja now. Mwanza kuangalia the leaders of incitement. Na kuna watu wengine tunaita as you are human right. Na wengine tunaita as you are nini. Where are they? Kwa ni kuna incitement imeshinda hiyo. Fanyu kwa nasema ukabili. He is a tribalism number one. Na amealibu watoto ya watu. Kila fahali. Kila fahali. Hakuna fahali ya jaribu. Sasa na uli kutokea ati. Sujui ukabila. Wewe mudomo yako. You are tribalism number one. And I'm telling you. If you kashaku wa udai today. The first person suspect. It will be you. If you kamani kujuli udai today. The first suspect is you. If any person from central will die. Wewe. Tumeweka in notice. Wewe ndi utakuwa umepanga mambo hayo. Na mina ona Didmas. Hameweza kurespond. Baada ya zi kuangaya hapa. He's life. Na hamesama tuweke Kenya mbele. Na tuweke Kenya kwa maombi. Didmas. That is the way. That's the way Didmas. Inchi tuweke mbele. Ima boingine ikuja nyuma. God bless Kenya. Wacha tuzikia kichinjio kesho. Itakuwa na muna gani. Mshimo jamba moja na mwisho. Kusiana na speaker wichangula. Jana Danya na kusema kuamba. Sio haki kwanza kukitokea watu waende judiciary awe impeachment na ashitakiwe haku yako hapo hakuwe mkabila wetangu na haku yako hakuwe mkabila when you say that wanainji ambayo wanaamini bunga wanangojea nini wakati yu mamu wasingishu akisema ataonesha kachagua anamefea ya notice Kemani isho kwa hii, kemani isho mwa hako hapo. He is talking the same thing. Uyu mutu ingine wakisi. He is talking the same. Sasa, Kenyans, muna koja bunga ingine kani? Muna koja bunga ingine. In fact, with those facts, if lawyers, Kenya law of society, wakienda kotini, those people will be removed from those positions. Ama bunga itavunjwa. It is enough evidence. Walo watu tunamini. Kumbe diyo majeneru ya kuongoza vita. It is very, 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 very sad.